Hey guys, so this video is for our second through fourth grade team for December week four. So this is for Sunday the 22nd. That's when we're going to do our big Christmas, excuse me, I just burped on this video. It's awesome. Um, that's when we're going to do our big Christmas services for our kids. Monday night when we have our adult Christmas services, kids are just going to watch the star, the movie. So um, all month long, we've been learning about the life app of joy, finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way. And our memory verse of the month is Philippians 4.4. 4. Always be joyful because you belong to the Lord. I will say it again. Be joyful. So the first week we heard about God, um, we said we can be joyful because God always keeps his promises. And we heard about God predicting Jesus coming from the Old Testament. Then the second week we learned that we can be joyful because God can do the impossible. And we heard about Elizabeth being pregnant with John the Baptist, even though she was very old. Last week we heard um, we can be joyful even when things don't go our way because um, our even when things, I think it was don't go our way, I can't remember exactly, but when the angel came and told Mary that she was going to have a baby and she was not expecting that at all. And then this week our story is called O Night Divine and it's about Jesus being born from Luke chapter 2. And our bottom line is you can have joy because God sent his son. So we are hearing the story of Christmas. So, um, like always, we would love for you to join us at 820 and 1020 in the garage door room. I say this every week, but it is definitely worth my time to get here 10 minutes early. It's a great time to stop and slow down on Sunday mornings to remind myself of why I'm here and why I'm serving. It's a great time to connect with all of you and hear what's going on in all of your lives and to be praying for you. So I really love that time in the garage door room. Then just for sure, make sure that you're here at 830 and 1030 in your small group area so that you've got everything ready to go. When service starts at 8.40 and 10.40, um, when kids are coming in, I didn't write this down for this week, but make sure to make it personal. Greet kids by their name. Make sure that you know everyone's name in your group and definitely help any first-time guests to feel welcome. I would imagine that we will probably have quite a few first-time guests this week since it is kind of our Christmas weekend. Then your interactivity. Um, when kids are arriving, you're going to ask them what the best gift they've ever been given is. And while you're discussing their best gifts, you are going to be wrapping some boxes. So every kid in your group is going to have a little white box. We're assembling them right now. So it's just a little, um, you know, it's maybe like that big, that wide, just a little square box. And the kids are not going to know what's inside, okay? So four of your boxes are going to have five candies and a question square, one of the boxes is going to have five candies and a Jesus picture. So that's five boxes. And then the rest of your boxes are just going to have five candies in them. So what you're going to have to kind of decide is if you've got nine kids in your small group that day, the first five or whatever, five of them need to have these boxes that have the questions and the Jesus picture. And the other four will just have boxes that just have candy. If you have 12 kids in your group, you need to make sure that five of them get these boxes and the rest will just have candy. But the kids don't know what's in their box. The boxes are already going to be closed. You don't want them to see what's inside. Okay? And um, you're going to spend this intro time wrapping those boxes. So the boxes are not going to be wrapped. You're going to have wrapping paper at your group. And the kids are going to wrap the boxes with the wrapping paper. The only thing I can say, just based off helping my kids wrap presents, is it might be helpful if you just cut pieces of paper already that are big enough to go around the boxes and then the kids can just wrap them from there and that way they're not trying to cut pieces that are big enough. Then when service starts at 9 and 11, you're going to divide your group into two teams and you're going to have each team link arms with their teammate and form a line standing next to each other. And then you're going to have the two teams face each other with about 10 feet in between them. And then each team will take turns calling someone from the opposite team to come over for a no smile contest. So a no smile contest is when you choose to look someone in the face for as long as you can without cracking a smile. And the person who gets called over can decide to have a no smile contest with whoever they choose. And if the person who has been called over loses the no smile contest, they have to join the opposing team. If the person from the host team loses, then that person has to go back with their opponent to join the other team. So just play several rounds as long as time allows. And the team with the most people at the end wins. So super fun little game. You're going to say, that was really fun trying to watch all of you hold your smiles. And there were a few of you who are really great at concealing your laughter, but a few of you who just couldn't help but smile no matter how hard you tried. So how did it feel when someone had to join your team because they couldn't not smile? 
Well, today in Large Group, we're going to learn about someone who was sent over to us that can always help us be full of joy. So then you'll go across the hall to Large Group. I'm pretty sure you're just going to have a host and you're going to be watching the video, but we'll see. We're trying to work on getting a live storyteller for this week, so we will see. Um, after Large Group, you're going to hear the story of, of Jesus' birth. And when you get back, you're going to encourage kids to sit in a circle, and you're going to give each kid a wrapped gift from the pre-service time. It does not have to be the gift that they wrapped. It doesn't matter because they're going to be passing around. So you're going to instruct kids to not open the gifts until you say that it's time, and you're going to tell kids that at the end of the game, the person who has the picture of Jesus inside their box wins. So you're going to call out various passing instructions that are going to keep the gifts moving. And when you're finished passing um, with the passing instructions, you're going to let the kids unwrap their gifts. And then you're going to call out the winner, the person with the baby Jesus in their box. And for the kids who received the re- quit slamming the door. For the kids who received the review questions in their boxes, you're going to let them take turns reading it out loud and let the group answer. We okay, quit slamming it. We are at church to get out of the house. These snow days are killing me. Okay. I know you guys can't relate. So uh, pass the gift to your right. If your name starts with an R, um, then trade with the person to your left. Pass the gift to left. You You can pass the gifts any way you'd like, however you want. There's some ideas. You can do different ones. And then here's your four questions. Why was Caesar Augustus making Mary and Joseph go to Bethlehem? For the census. What went wrong with Mary and Joseph? There was nowhere to stay. Where did Mary and Joseph end up staying? A place where animals were kept. Who was born in Bethlehem later that night? Jesus. Everyone's going to get five little Tootsie Rolls that they can eat. So, awesome job, everyone. How many of you had an idea of which box had Jesus inside of it? Well, you guys are some pretty great guessers. And the fun part of this game was that you had no idea what box was going to be sent to you next. But you knew that finding Jesus would lead to the big win. And although a win doesn't make us does make us pretty happy. Today we learned that you can have joy because God sent his son. So we don't have to be guessing whether we're going to receive the best gift that could ever be sent down to us. God already sent his one and only son to bring us joy, and that will last way longer than this Christmas season, and that's pretty awesome. So for the memory verse activity, you're going to divide your group into teams of three or four and give them each a Bible and have them review the memory verse together and then instruct the teams to come up with their own dance or motions to represent the memory verse. And explain that whatever they come up with can have actions that describe some of the words, or it can be a dance that describes how the verse makes them feel. And then you can put on some Christmas music from your phone um, while they perform. And after teams are finished, you can compete in your very own Christmas dance-off by having each team perform their memory verse dance or emotion. So just say, I didn't know we had so many people with those kinds of dance moves and motions, and I'm very impressed. So whether your dance was super silly or whether you put a lot of thought into your moves, I hope that this dance will help you remember your memory verse for a very long time. And no matter where you find yourselves this Christmas season, whether you're in the middle of an epic dance battle or in the middle of your living room floor celebrating with your family, remember that you can have joy because God sent his son. So then you have some optional discussion questions. What is the most meaningful part of the Christmas story for you? What are you most looking forward to about this Christmas week? And Christmas is so fun and wonderful, but it can also sometimes be disappointing. What can you do if um, to have joy if and when you don't get everything that you asked for or someone in your family isn't getting along or something just goes wrong on Christmas Day? Great question. So then to close on a prayer, just remind kids that no matter what happens this week during Christmas, God sent his son because he loves us that much. And ask your group if they have anything they would like to pray for, and then just close down together in prayer. So that's it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for serving. I think it's going to be an incredible Sunday. Lots of families that we get to tell them how much God loves them, that he sends us Jesus. So thank you guys so, so much for serving, and I'll see you on Sunday.